So hello guys, today we are going to do a comparative analysis between Argo and Airflow. As you might be knowing, both are a pipeline orchestration tool and we'll be talking about what is the difference between uh, in terms of features. Okay. And I will end this video by explaining like in which scenario you should use which one. So let's say start. So the very first difference is like uh, in terms of uh, the build. So that is uh, Argo is built on top of Kubernetes environment, which makes it uh, easy to integrate with Kubernetes resources and take advantage of all of its features. Okay. Uh, when it comes to Airflow, it is a standalone application while it can be containerized and run on Kubernetes. It doesn't inherently uh, leverages Kubernetes feature by default, but of course, as I said, you can use it. This means that managing resources and scaling can be a bit more challenging. It is not challenging, but if you compare with Argo, it's a little bit challenging in terms in a case of Airflow. Okay. Then second goes like uh, uh, in terms of declarative workflows. So workflow in Argo are defined using a declarative YAML file, making it easy to version control and manage workflow configuration. As you know, like developers uh, don't uh, use uh, much YAML files. Basically, uh, it's uh, mostly related with DevOps. Okay, so that's where I would say, I'm not saying it is difficult or easy. It's just like in our day-to-day -day life, as a developer, we don't uh, use YAML that much, right? It's uh, it more uh, goes with DevOps. So that's where it is a DevOps friendly tool. But when it comes to uh, Apache Airflow, it, it is Pythonic, which means it allows user to define workflow as a Python code, making it flexible and easy for developers to create and manage workflow. That's where I say like it is a developer friendly tool and it supports a wide range of plugins allowing users to extend their functionalities and integrate with various services and systems okay what is next so next is like comes uh, uh, crds that are custom uh, resource definitions again it is like very well go with our devops so argo uses crds to define custom resources making it extensible and adaptable uh, to various use cases but when it comes to airflow as i already explained is it is the pythonic way of um, creating the workflow in case of uh, airflow so that's where like here it provides dynamic workflow generation what that does that means it means airflow allows dynamic workflow generation enabling parameter parameterized workflows and dynamic task creation when it comes to coding so you are, you become more flexible right you can do parameterization automatically and a lot of dynamism you can achieve which offers the diverse set of pre-built operators for various tasks like data transfer, email notification, and database operations. So these uh, uh, operators you get out of the box in case of Airflow. For example, you need to connect uh, Postgres a database. Then here we get a Postgres operator. If you want to do some operations on uh, base cell, then you get the base operator. If you want to, uh, of course, uh, the by default is Python, so you get a Python operator, right? So here you get like a lot of uh, inbuilt features, which makes it very flexible. Next comes like DAG. So Argo workflows offers powerful features such as directed acyclic workflows, step-based workflows, and scripts. Okay. So this, this uh, particular feature is same in both Apache Airflow and Argo. So there is not much difference here. Okay. Then uh, next comes like in terms of workflow designing. So Argo workflow supports more complex workflows with its uh, support for loops, recursion, and conditional logic. This makes it a powerful tool for orchestrating complicated jobs that require a high degree of control and flexibility. While it comes to Airflow, so it excels in its ability to define workflow as code. So wherever code it comes in pictures, you get a lot of more flexibility. But as written here, like the uh, Apache Airflow does not support recursion loop out of the box. But of course, certainly you can achieve this. In case of Airflow, it allows for dynamic pipeline generation, versioning, testing. While it doesn't support loops and recursion out of the box, it does offer a wide range of operators for tasks providing ample flexibility. So you can do this looping uh, recursion functionality in Airflow as uh, also as it provides workflow as a code, but this doesn't uh, get out of the box, which is the case in Argo workflow. Okay. Next comes like a UI feature, like a visualization in terms of UI. <clears throat> so Argo workflows so while having a simpler UI provides a straightforward and clean interface for weaving and managing workflow. Okay. It has limited functionalities available on the UI, but that's where it makes it very clean interface and managing workflow becomes very easy. While it may not be as feature is as Airflow's UI, it is more than capable of most workflows management tasks. Okay. In case of Apache Airflow, it is a feature rich in terms of UI. 
So it offers a more robust and interactive UI compared to Argo workflows. Airflow's UI allows you to monitor your workflows in real time, view logs, and even rerun tasks directly from the interface. So this is the very uh, like uh, most powerful uh, feature of Apache Airflow. Suppose some task uh, uh, go, uh, got into some error, so you can fix that one and then you can rerun directly from the interface itself. This can be a huge benefit for debugging and optimizing of workflows, right? Next comes scheduling. So Argo workflows uses Kubernetes cron job to schedule workflows. As you know, in the first point, Argo workflows are designed on top of Kubernetes environment. That's why they leverage the power of Kubernetes for resource management and reliability. While uh, uh, comes to Airflow, Airflow on the other hand uses its own scheduler. This allows for more complex scheduling rules and dependencies. But it also means that the performance and the reliability of the scheduler are dependent on the resources of the machine where Airflow is installed. In case of Airflow, you have more flexibility, but simultaneously you need to do a little bit more job compared to Argo. Right? Argo is built on top of uh, Kubernetes, so that's where every feature which Kubernetes provides, you can uh, get out of the box in terms of Argo. When it comes to community support, so this is the one of the important feature when uh, it comes to take a decision in, term, uh, in terms of open source tool, right? So that's where I, in terms of community and support Argo workflows uh, while having a smaller community has a rapidly growing user base. So compared to Apache Airflow, Argo has a smaller community, Apache has a bigger community. It has a larger community and more extensive documentation. This can be a significant advantage when looking for help or trying troubleshoot issues, right? But I mean, uh, this is important, but uh, I mean, when um, they release a uh, uh, stable version, so this, uh, I mean, uh, every time we don't get into this particular thing, right? But still, like, uh, this is one of the important feature. If you want to customize something, add some features on your own because they are open source, they allow you to add feature. And then if you want to understand the code, uh, then community uh, comes in picture, right? So these are the important features or comparison, I would say. Uh, I'm not uh, advocating uh, any particular Argo or Airflow. I'm just explaining what are the features. So in one particular feature, Argo is uh, better. In one particular feature, uh, Airflow is better, okay? It depends on situation to situation when to use which one. So let's discuss like uh, when to use which one, right? So uh, as I said, uh, Argo workflows and Apache Airflow uh, cater to different project requirements. Apache Airflow is a platform designed to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. It allows you to define workflows as directed recycling graphs and offers flexibility in setting of complex dependencies, right? As uh, it is a workflow as a code. On the other hand, Argo workflow is a containerized uh, native workflow engine on top of Kubernetes designed for executing and managing uh, jobs on Kubernetes. It supports uh, complex workflows, offer graphical interfaces for workflow visualization and enables the use of Kubernetes resource directly. Now, when considering your project requirement, think about the complexity of your workflows, the level of flexibility you need, the kind of environment you are working in. If you are working in a Kubernetes environment, Argo workflow will be a better fit, right? Conversely, if you need to set up complex dependencies and require a high level of flexibility, Apache Airflow might be the way. So, for example, if you have a big team where you have developer, DevOps, and uh, for every specific requirement, you have a specialized resource available. Then you can go with uh, Argo workflow. But if you need a flexibility on developer level, uh, like uh, suppose uh, you are a data scientist and you are designing a ML pipeline, and then uh, you uh, can go with uh, Apache Airflow because you yourself need to design the pipeline. Another comes in terms of scalability. Scalability is another critical factor to consider it uh, uh, in terms of Argo workflow versus Airflow. As your business grows, your data workflows will become more complex, and the tool you use to should be able to scale with your needs, right? So that's where Apache Airflow offers high scalability and can handle complex workflows with ease. It supports dynamic pipeline generation, which means it can adapt to changing workflow as your business scales. Moreover, Airflow's robust community and extensive documentation makes it sustainable choice for the long term. However, in case of Argo workflow, it is being Kubernetes native, offers excellent ex uh, scalability as well because it is uh, built on top of Kubernetes. So it will have all the functionalities like scalability uh, uh, supported by Kubernetes. It can handle large scale workflows and allows for easy scaling of resources. However, its community is not as extensive as Airflows, which could potentially impact long-term long sustainability, right? So that's where in a nutshell, like, 
uh, uh, um, like uh, if you ask my takeaway so i would say like if you are a developer friendly like uh, you yourself need to design the workflow then you go with uh, apache airflow but if you are like uh, devops friendly so then you can choose uh, ergo so in terms of designing the workflow right and when it comes to like a scalability and all those things if you are using uh, kubernetes which is the most of the cases nowadays then you can go with ergo Otherwise, uh, you can go Airflow as well, uh, but uh, it is not out of the box. Kubernetes support is there. You need to do a little bit of uh, customization as well. Okay, so this is all about the comparison and when to use which one. There is no right answer, uh, but it depends on situation to situation. Okay, so that's all for today's videos. And uh, at the end, I would like to give the credit for these resources to these uh, um, articles. So this is everything is referenced by these two articles. One is Medium article. Uh, and another is like code so if you want to read in more detail you can refer these two articles okay so thank you very much